Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. Today is stage one of the Giro d'Italia. The tour of Italy has started and it is the world champion Filippo Ganna winning today's stage in impressive style with more than 22 seconds on second place. Ineos is back in the Grand Tours trying to make up redemption from the Tour de France. They've done a spectacular job today of course with the world champion winning and Garrett Thomas is on form. He's one second out of second place, only his teammates in front. He has set the bar for the GC favorites. The next best GC guy, you got to give props to Simon Yates. He's a Tour of Spain winner. He's wore the pink jersey in the Giro before, and he's only 26 seconds off of G. Thomas. That is a very good ride for a rider of his size, weight, and power to pull out a time trial like that, only lose in such a small amount of time on a downhill TT is very impressive day. Wilco Kellerman also 105 off from G. Thomas. That's a pretty solid ride, so we'll see how his form progresses. Nibali is 106 back. Now that I'm a little more concerned about because normally when he has Grand Tour winning form, he would be a little bit faster on that. So clearly he's coming into this Giro not quite 100% and he's going to hope to get better. Now of course stage 3, we already have a summit finish. So they're going to have to find some form and do whatever they can to survive stage 3 and then the other GC riders who are down on time today will of course have later in the week time to find that fitness to really start climbing good but they have to find fitness by stage 15 because stage 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 those are all hard days folks and they're all stages over 200k some even the flat flat stage is 250k long so that last week of racing at the Giro here is really going to be spectacular but the Giro organizers did add in dustings of little mountain stages between now and of course stage 15 but you better be on form when you get to stage 15 because it's going to be a hard week of racing back to back mountain stages we got to look at Jakob Folsing's time today he's 124 off we kind of expected to see a little bit better out of him. He was up there with the favorites at the World Championships last week. So you know he has good form. He is a very cautious rider when it comes to the conditions like we saw today. There was a lot of wind, a couple really hard technical downhill turns where you saw even today's winner, Filippo, having problems getting through the turns. He's a powerful guy though, so he can make that up. But Jakob Folsing, I know him. We've been teammates before. He likes to be safe and secure. And on a course like today with this much wind and the bike blowing around so much, a couple of the really technical turns, you could see where he'd lose more time. But I was still a little bit surprised that he didn't have something closer to a minute or 40 seconds to G. Thomas so that he could stay in the running. He is there. He's close. But you got to understand that he's a little bit further out and I'd put that down to probably the wind conditions and the technical turns that they had where he's always trying to be a little safe. Of course, we have Rafael Micah. He's 137 off. He would be up there as one of the climbers. So his time was not very good in the time trial today, but he's, gonna, he's really more a climber than a time trialist anyways. So it's what I would expect. Got to give my hats off to, to Simon Yates. He pulled out one of the best time trials there for a guy his size. Only, again, losing 26 seconds to G. Thomas. Ineos is back at the Grand Tours trying to control again. One last thing before we take off. I want to cut here and go into the garage. I'll jump on my TT bike and let's discuss how Miguel Angel Lopez had his crash and why it probably happened. So here I am on the TT bike and this is really what I saw out of Miguel Angel Lopez's crash. It really looked like he was getting kind of comfortable and relaxing on the bike instead of in full race mode. Could be setting up for something that's coming up that we can't see from the picture. But really it looks like he's possibly at the Tour of Italy and just got done doing the Tour de France and knows he's not racing for GC. 
It looks like he's just a bit too relaxed. You'll see during his crash, first he starts off in the TT position like this. He'll switch his hand over, but when he switches his hand over, he's pulling his weight off of the elbow pads here. And the elbow pads are really what's keeping the front end attached to the road. So when you see all the bumps that he's hitting, if you're pulling your hands off the bars at the same time releasing your elbows here, one hand's coming off, the elbows are being released. He's coming over here to grab the right wing possibly to grab a back break or something i'm not certain on that we can't really see the angle that's coming up in front of him but you'll see him grabbing his hand is really loose on this right side wing here and as he's coming off with the other he hits the next bump he has no weight on the elbow pads and without that weight there's no traction on the front wheel Folks, the TT bike is not like your road bike. It is very stiff and the reaction to the road is felt immediately up through the whole body because of the bike being so stiff. It's made to accelerate fast. The rear disc is solid so it doesn't flex much. They want everything from the pedals to be put into the wheels and then attached to the ground so you're accelerating forward with every pedal stroke. Again, this is not your road bike. It is very stiff. It is very uncomfortable in the bumps and on a day like today in Italy on stage one with that much wind you always have to be paying attention while you're racing a machine that's as dangerous as your TT bike. It is exceptionally fast but is not made for smoothness and is very dangerous in the wind. That was the combination we had in Italy today. Lots of wind, rough roads and then what looked like to me to be a fairly relaxed Lopez changing his position on the bike, not being real aggressive. When you're real aggressive, you're going from here and you're just immediately like this, and then you're back in the position. All your weight is on the, is not, you're just holding onto this for some traction, but really it's your elbow pads right here that's keeping that front wheel from deflecting on all the bumps. When you release that weight off your elbow pads, you are releasing the front wheel to do a lot of dangerous things. When it hits the bumps, it's gonna bounce hard. If the wind catches it, it's gonna pull it left or right like this, quite aggressively. So really what I saw is that he was just really calm, relaxed in the race, possibly too relaxed. And when he's just switching over, he's moving his position from here to here. He loses that traction on the front wheel. On top of that, and this, was, this is a big thing to keep an eye on, he lifts his weight off the saddle. Now you have two places of traction. I already talked about the elbow pads, but your butt on the saddle, putting weight on the back wheel, is what's holding the back wheel down. It's very important, or through the bumps, to either have really good traction on the pedals with pressure, but the saddle is even better to hold the bike in place. So when he comes down, watch his right leg is all the way extended. He's lifted his weight off the saddle. Now he has no pressure on the saddle and that's going to cause, that's going to allow a big reflex when he hits the bump. That, that reaction has to go somewhere and the bike is so stiff that it won't flex to absorb that hit from the road. So he'll lift up. That allows the back end to become really loose. He doesn't have real weight on the handlebars, certainly very little, minimum to nothing on the elbow pads. As he comes here, he hits. Now the bike is so stiff that when it hits the hand, it causes his hands to slip. Both hands go over to the side like this, and he's off into the barriers. My personal, professional opinion, he was just too relaxed at that moment on a course that's too dangerous for a TT bike with a relaxed rider. Hope you enjoyed my take. Hope you like the butterfly effect on stage one of the Giro d'Italia. See you guys real soon.